It seems that Duke Inferno didn't deign to personally grace the space station. He merely cast infernal fire into our midst to wreak havoc among the researchers. When the fire fizzles out, his malevolent plans will vanish without a trace. I will head to Herta's office and activate the folded space in the Curio storage room. With some changes to its parameters, I can use it to block the fire's teleportation routes and seal it inside the station. Mr. Ratio, please go with Miss Trailblazer and contain the fire. Infernal fire is also a form of energy life form. The imaging device will pick up its trace. Follow it. The way is awash with flames. It must have just teleported. Be careful. Get ready to dash into the fire. It's still in the space station. Like Skrullum said, it cannot escape from here. Do you know what to do with cornered prey? Hunt it to the death. Space has shifted. I can deduce its escape route with a mere glance. Duke Inferno can't maintain it anymore.
seems like this chase is about to end. over. Ignorant fools blindly chasing the firelight, not knowing that the blessings of destruction already lie at their feet. It is little wonder that even the descent of the Savior's Legion was unable to cleanse this place. I will acknowledge my brashness. offer you the demise of your sins with infernal fire. <laughs> A small fragment of consciousness in there is gone. Duke Inferno has discarded this fire. No. Hold on. whereabouts.
Good work. You did very well. Rest assured, Asta only had a fright. She is recovering in the clinic. While you were chasing the enemy, the security department also found the missing researchers. Affirmation, they are all safe and sound. It was all thanks to Adler. They fell into a spatial curio and could not leave until the Department of Ecology's most knowledgeable curio expert solved it from within. Many of them were shaken by their experience when Arlen found them, but they are otherwise fine. Yes, it is over. This business is over, and I believe the space station will be able to deal with any internal aftershocks. In Herta's stead, I thank you for your efforts, madam. But there is one mystery that remains unsolved. <laughs> and that is something I must deal with myself. I've been waiting. Fallout from this incident remains. Surely you have plenty of pressing matters to attend to. Or is the safety of the space station beneath your concern? Answer. That is exactly why I came. After all, the principal figure in this whole affair is right here. <laughs> when did you start to doubt me? When one is immersed in academic research, skepticism comes far more naturally than belief. I've had the same bad habit as you since the beginning, Mr. Ratio. I must say, I'm quite honored, Mr. Scrulum. But do explain, why opt for silent wisdom when you already had the pieces of the puzzle? For curiosity's sake. Affirmation. I made the same decision as you. To accompany and observe. Oh. And when did you become convinced? Objectively speaking, Aside from some minor spiritual trauma, no researchers were hurt in this attack, which never aligned with the Annihilation Gang's modus operandi. Logic, a third party saved them. Had I not fortuitously acquired a spark of the Phase Flame and intervened in Duke Inferno's teleportation, those people would already be space waste floating past the windows here. You are more candid than I calculated. But still behaving within your calculations, no? One last question, Scrulum. Genius though you are, can you deduce why I did this? I cannot be sure and can only hypothesize. 
Helping the weak hints at the merciful instinct of a medical doctor, but maintaining a cool, detached observation reveals the strictness of a scholar. And pulling the strings from behind the curtain is akin to laying down the gauntlet to a genius. The ruler of planet Scrulum is indeed well versed in the human mind. It's a pity you're as much in the ivory tower as other geniuses. You still got one thing wrong. To stand aside and observe is the best treatment one can give. There is a disease called foolishness that is harder to cure than any ailment. The path of erudition has neither reason nor logic. While geniuses wander among the stars, the ordinary can't even trace their footsteps. Those less gifted have no choice but to walk alone, enduring a lifetime of tumbles and triumphs. But even a life marked by failure is a life worth living. It is only in moments of solitude and despair when help is absent that fools grasp how to pick themselves up. I have a fastidious nature. I cannot stand fools, idiots, or imbeciles. Seeing them fills me with dread. Regrettably, this space station is just like the Intelligentsia Guild, devoid of geniuses and filled with mediocrity. You wish to uproot the researchers' blind worship of geniuses. I am only laying out my questions. As for the answers, they'll find them themselves. Pursuit tinged with negativity is still pursuit, and it is capable of leading us to the right conclusion. For the masses of the mediocre to reach a level of awareness, this is a necessary rite of passage. You are, indeed, more like a medical doctor than a scholar. As for the spark I leave behind... I believe Asta will deal with it properly. It is also a lesson I left for her. With that, I take my leave. I look forward to future encounters with such brilliant minds. Let's hope they're as memorable as those we had today. Hmm. A farce full of trivial concerns. Ultimately, they're just mediocre minds. A space so meticulously curated just for my refined tastes. I suppose it might do for moments of reflection. 
Perhaps the best part is that even with so many present, there's a delightful scarcity of simpletons. Ugh, not at all. As a nameless who's always on the road, constantly meeting with various characters, don't these encounters become wearisome? It's no small feat. The average person is easily swayed by their environment, after all. Go ahead and try. With this mask on, I intend to keep the world at bay. <laughs>